Greetings. Get ready to embark on an extraordinary journey exploring the world of Twingate to install in your Proxmox server. We get to install the newest version of Twingate fresh off the press. Twingate is built with zero trust, making your network very secure. What makes Twingate special is its use of UDP protocol instead of TCP protocol making it faster than TCP protocol. We will show you how to say goodbye to your VPN. In this video we do two installations of Twingate, one for the laptop to access the Twingate control panel, and one for your Proxmox server. If you are considering using Twingate for corporate use, you may consider installing Twingate in your Proxmox servers for cloud management. So, buckle up and prepare to be amazed by the brilliance of this video. Now, without further ado, allow me to introduce you to our Proxmox expert, Nico. Please note that Nico has a charming Dodecanese European accent. But fear not, he speaks the Queen's English fluently. Over to you, Nico. Thank you, Josh. Hi there. Today we are going to look at an interesting alternative to a VPN that you can use for your Proxmox server and also for your servers and VMs to be able to access them remotely. Our instructions for this video have been published in our blog. The, a link to this URL is provided down below. We would recommend that you follow us and do the installation while watching this video. We start by looking at use cases for using Twingate. Firstly, and primarily, this gives you a VPN replacement. It gives you access to all your infrastructure and it gives you extremely good security. And you can control what applications are available to which users. This is ideal for a home lab and for personal use, but more than that, it is also excellent for business or enterprise use. Twingate uses zero trust. Now, how zero trust works is we do, they don't allow you to log in with the password, a user ID and a password to get in as passwords can be cracked and hacked. People tend to not use secure passwords. So that's always a problem with VPNs that your system is compromised by the weakest link and the more access your weakest link has, the more your network is compromised. To get around this, they start by using very long keys to authenticate the servers, firstly. Secondly, your server's key is preset to expire at a certain date. In an enterprise environment, you may want to expire your tokens every month or every three months. Zero Trust Network access is replacing VPNs, the legacy technology based on a security perimeter paradigm that implicitly trusts resources, devices, and people connect to a network appropriate to network architecture of the 1980s. And this is the problem. It's a major weakness. The way we authenticate with our service is a major weakness. So Twingate works on the principle that we trust no one. And if we trust no one, we have to have quite strong security boundaries to connect to the server, which gives us very good security. Enough said. Now, how Twingate works, I've got two diagrams here. The first diagram shows what we call the architectural layers. You've got the user layer over here, and we are not limited to Linux, Windows, and Mac. We can also use iPads and Android tablets to connect to our resources. Unlike VPN, where TCP is used, 
Here we establish a TLS tunnel and we are using the UDP protocol. Now TwinGate provides a relay on their controller which connects us to our various servers or parts of our network. So we can break our network into sub-networks, even virtual sub-networks, so that we can control which servers which users can access. The authentication mechanism is explained nicely by this diagram. They use the OKTA G Suite to do the authentication and you can set up your users to use 2FA and various authentication services so that you can have a secure connection and secure authentication. As far as documentation goes, TwinGate provides excellent documentations. Every part of the process is explained very well. Now you may want to ask, what does it cost? For a home user, it's free and they limit you to five users and one administrator. And you can connect to 10 remote networks. And on these networks, you hang all your servers and your VMs and your Proxmox servers. So for us, we go with this option. Enough said. Now let's get our hands dirty. We start by creating an account. So you click on this link, it will bring you to here. You need to put your email address in here and select whether it's a home or a work. So we are going to put our details in there. And then once you've done that, you click get started. The next step is to define what this is. So in my case, I will tick home lab. You will click, you heard this on YouTube. And in our case, we will click Google. Now that we've done this, we are ready to go to our network. At this stage, you need to use an identity provider. OKTA okay, is a good one. If you don't have an identity provider, you can go in with your Google, Microsoft, GitHub, and LinkedIn. We're going to go with Google. Now it's building our network, and it brings us to this page where we can start our setup. So you will choose what network you are going to use, IP address, entire range, and you create a resource. So let's do this. So our IP range is 10.154.2.0 slash 24. And now we can create a resource. And now we are going to create a connector. I have a Linux machine. I'm going to select this one and I'm going to use this to connect to my Proxmox server. Click on here for Linux and then generate the token. You need to create a token every time you create a new connector. Every time we do this, we need to authenticate. So we are authenticating with Google. And now that we've authenticated, it's created us a token, and we can use this token if we want to do this manually. However, they do provide us with a call command. So let's copy this command. I'm going to put this onto a notepad. And this is what you will run on your Proxmox server. So let's copy this command. Let's go into our Proxmox. Username is root and type in the Proxmox password. Okay, that's fine. 
and then open the shell. Expand the shell. Now let's open our notepad and copy the curl command. Now that we've added our Proxmox server to TwinGate, let's log into TwinGate. At this stage, we now can download TwinGate to install it on our laptop, whether you're using Apple Mac, Windows, or Linux, or whether you're using an Android tablet or an iPad. Now that we've done that, you need to click on Remote Networks, and you'll see they have generated my first remote network, and it says there are two connectors there. It's a good idea to rename the, the connector that connected to our Proxmox. So click here and click Edit. I like to keep the existing name and just add Proxmox. Having connected our Proxmox server to TwinGate, we now want to connect other machines. You will add a connector for each machine and virtual machine that you want to connect. We have succeeded to add our Proxmox server to our network. Our goal was to install the software, to create the network connection and to add our Proxmox server to there. With the same process, you would then add other servers to that and other virtual machines to that as well. When you've done that, depending on your requirements, you may need to add a team. And then you would add individuals to that, which you can do there. And then you've got policies. By default, our users can access all the servers. But in your case, you may want to segment your network so that you can limit which users access which parts of your network. You can have administrators, and then you can have web administrators, DBAs, and you can limit that the DBAs can only access the databases, and that the web users can only access the web servers. And you can do all that with policies. I'm sure by now you've realized that this is a very simple and very valuable and very useful way to connect to your servers. Thank you for watching this video. We trust that you have found this useful and that you will consider using TwinGate to connect remotely to your servers and to your Proxmox through the internet with very good security, much better than through VPN. Please give us a like and please subscribe to our channel. We have not reached our goal yet and we will appreciate your subscription to our channel. And with that, over to you, Josh. Thank you for watching this video, exploring the world of TwinGate, to install in your Proxmox server. We got to install the newest version of TwinGate fresh off the press. TwinGate is built with zero trust, making your network very secure. What makes TwinGate special is its use of UDP protocol instead of TCP protocol, making it faster than the TCP protocol. In this video, we did two installations of TwinGate 1 for the laptop to access the TwinGate control panel and one for your Proxmox server. Now it is time to say goodbye to your VPN. If you are considering using TwinGate for corporate use, you may consider installing TwinGate in your Proxmox servers for cloud management. If you have not given us a like, please do so. Your dedication to exploring Proxmox's capabilities is invaluable. Stay tuned for more insights, automation, and empowerment through its incredible tools for your home lab. Please like and comment to share your feedback and suggestions for our channel. If you found this video valuable, consider subscribing to stay updated with our latest content and tutorials, ensuring you never miss out on informative videos. Your support is crucial for our channel's growth. For those eager to deepen their knowledge, consider becoming a Patreon supporter for exclusive access to upcoming training courses, 
enriching your expertise, and supporting the channel. We genuinely appreciate your support and look forward to sharing more enriching content with you. Stay curious, keep exploring, and continue harnessing Proxmox's remarkable potential in your home lab and DevOps journey. Thank you for being part of our community.